Okay, this is a very powerful room over here. Can I move this? All right, so um, for those who don't know who I am, my name is Gabriel Friedman, uh, otherwise known as Rob Gobb, some of you are familiar. I want to just start off with a very quick story, just to um, bring the, uh, the moment to a very serious, uh, very serious moment, and then we'll break it down a little. There's a story that goes back a couple years ago, the, we know that Rabbi Lau, the chief rabbi of Israel, was once visiting the great city of New York. And he went to go visit someone by the name of uh, Ed Koch. Anybody familiar? Not too many. Okay, Ed Koch. He was, a, he was an important figure. And he went to go visit him and he asked them when they met, they, you know, Ed Koch requested that they should be able to meet. So they go ahead and they meet each other. And when they met, he says to them, you know, I want to tell you something. He says, I'm also a Holocaust survivor. This is what Ed Koch says to Mayor Lau. Now that's a very, very heavy statement to make because he was actually from the Bronx. So what exactly does that mean when he says that he himself was actually a Holocaust survivor? He said that they found some very interesting ideas that there was a fellow who unfortunately, many of us know who he is. His name is uh, Adolf Hitler. And uh, Adolf Hitler had a, in his, in his uh, area of where he, his headquarters, he had himself a globe. And he asked that he wanted to make sure that on the globe that he was going to have listed every place in the world where there were Jews. Every place where there were Jews, they're going to have a number. How many Jews are there? So they had for different places, thousands here, hundreds of thousands there, 10,000s there. And he pointed out that the United States was also, there was a number on there. The number was actually 6 million. 6 million Jews that were living in the United States. And his plan was to get rid of them also. So he said, when I found out about that, he says, you know what, I'm a survivor also. I didn't realize, but now we realize how powerful this is. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. If you want to understand how powerful the Jewish people are, if you want to know how important we are, sometimes we have to learn from very strange places. And by now you may have heard more than one time the fact that Hitler has taught us immense, immense lessons. And one of them is, on that globe where they found six million Jews in the United States and 300,000 there and 25,640 there, whatever it may be, there was actually a little town, I have no idea how to pronounce this, forgive me. Okay, I'm not gonna skip the town. The place is called Albania. The particular town is Tirana. You want to correct me? Tirana, Albania. And anyone know how many numbers were there? How many numbers were there? One number. There was one number on this little place in Albania. Hitler understood the fact that the power of one Jew, we got to get rid of them all. We got to get rid of them all. Even if there's one Jew in the far flung of the world, that's going to be the beginning, as he quotes, as a petri dish of the Jewish people again. We sought to get rid of everybody. He understands how powerful we are. The question is, do we? So some of you may not be familiar, but as you see written down over here on the other sign, that we know that this is a Torah that's being finished right now. A Sefer Torah that was done, a book of the Bible which has finished the entire Torah throughout all the acts of practice that were done throughout the world. And we know that there's a Allah, there's Allah, something about that in Jewish law, that if even one letter is missing from the entire Torah, one letter is missing from the entire Torah, the entire Torah is no good. The entire Torah is no good. This is why, you know, if you've ever been to a shul before, and you know, they're, they're laning, and one guy gets up and he looks a little close, everyone like pushes him back. Stop looking, because if it's no good, then we have to get a new one. But then one letter which is no good, the whole thing is gone. Understand, what's the value of a Torah? Maybe you don't understand. The immense spiritual value is, you can't even say. But the value in terms of cash money, you want to, you want to buy yourself a Sefer Torah? It's anywhere between ten and $100,000. It's mad cash. If one letter is no good, the whole thing is done, my friends. And we understand the fact that the sages tell us that the letters of the Torah are actually the letters of the soul. Every single letter is connected to the Jewish people. And the question I have for you today is which is your letter? Which one of these letters is your letter? But this isn't just like a nice little speech where you come over and go, thank you for joining us today. We want to thank. I'm going to go a little bit more than that. What does it mean that every single letter, every single letter that is in the Torah is connected to another part of the Jewish people? Which one is your particular letter? I don't think we really feel this. Do we really feel the fact that every one of us is connected to it? Let's take a look. What's your name? Yeah, say it again. Tom, do you feel it? Do you feel the love, Tom? Do you feel your letter? Do you understand your power? Do you understand your mission? 
The power of one? What's your name? You, Tao and thing. What's your name? Mario. Do you believe it? Do you believe your particular letter? Let me explain to you what it means to believe how powerful you are. Understand the thing. Your name, pronounce it again. Mario. Okay, Mario. I want you to imagine for a moment that you wake up in the morning, you step outside. And when you step outside, you look up and you notice that there's a plane coming by. And on the back of the plane, there's a banner. You look up and it says Mario. What would your reaction be? That's wonderful. And as you walk out, you're looking at it like it's incredible. A truck comes by and as a truck comes by, you look, you see it says Mario. And as you watch the truck go by, you look up again, there's a blimp, Mario. And then you walk outside, there's a bunch of people, hey Mario, you don't know who they are, They're like Mario. And another group of people come out, Mario, and all of a sudden someone's going, Mario, 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 Mario. There you go, stay there, Mario. Tell me something, how would that make you feel? How would that make you feel? Make you feel incredible. The question is, do every single one of us here recognize the fact and understand the fact that every part of the Torah is connected to us, that we have a connection and relationship? Every act of kindness and of chesed that was done in order to be able to make this happen, all 304,805, which is uh, the mayor actually looks at each one of them, I'll be super impressed. Every single act of kindness that was done created this Torah. And the question we have to ask ourselves, and you walk out of this room even before, is which letter are you, and what act are you gonna do? And what are you gonna do to make sure that you're part of this and that you don't fall away? Understand the fact that God himself created the world through chesed, as the sages tell us, olam chesed yibana. Where did God look to create the world? Anyone? Give you a hint, the Torah. Good, Mario, the Torah. The Torah. God looked the Torah and he created the world. The whole world was created by the Torah. Every single letter is connected to us. Olam chesed yibana. God created everything. So then we wonder for ourselves, but what really can we do practically? It's a nice little idea. Oh, what a nice speech that we heard. Isn't that good? And we'll walk out of here saying, mm, very good, very good, very good. But what is it practically that we can do about this? What is the person actually going to do? So understand that the sages tell us something very powerful. This is brought down in the Mishnah in Perky Elvis. More on that if you come join. What does the Mishnah say? The oral tradition teaches us that the world is created of three different things. Allah Torah, Allah Avodah, Vatimil Asasobi. Allah Torah means on the Torah itself. The actual Torah, the study of Torah. We're going, we're coming with this idea that we're finishing the Torah today. Allah Avodah, Avodah today means prayer. We're standing by the most, the epicenter of the world. Every prayer that is uttered from anywhere in the world comes right over here to this wall behind you. To this area, not this wall, by the way, behind that wall, the thing called the Beit Hamikdash, Makom Hamikdash, the, the temple. The, every single prayer goes there. The Al Gamil's got the idea of kindness, of doing acts of kindness and building and creating the world. Every single act that we do creates the world and it changes it. Unbelievable. But one may ask, what can I do practically? It's a nice schmooze. It's a nice idea. It's a nice concept. And every one of us is a letter and hurrah and Mario and everyone understands how powerful we are. But what can I do about it? What am I practically able to do? So I'll tell you a little story. This is going to go back a couple of years. This, my friends, happened in um, January. It sounds better if you see the actual date, so if I'm wrong, check it out. But January 12th, 2010. I think that was the date. It could have been the 9th. There was a little place called Haiti. I don't know your ages. I don't know whether you guys remember or not, but maybe you're familiar with the fact that it was a devastating earthquake that happened in Haiti. Devastating earthquake. Incidentally, who were the first ones on the scene? Israel, the first ones on the scene. Who were the last one on scene? Israel. Who were the middle ones on scene? Israel. Good, you're getting it. Out there doing unbelievable acts of kindness and changing the whole world. But there was a little boy who was living in England. This little boy's name was Charlie. I know what you're thinking. It's not Charlie bit my finger. <laughs> oh, Charlie. That hurts. Not that Charlie. A boy named Charlie Simpson living in a town in England, and he feels really terrible. He's seven years old. He feels horrible for what happened to all of these people in Haiti. So he wants to do something. What's a seven-year-old kid going to do? What's Mario going to do? What are any of us going to do? So we're powerful. What can we practically do, though? So what can a seven-year-old kid do? He decides what he's going to do is he's going to raise money to help the children of Haiti. How much money? He decides he wants to raise 500 pounds. I've given this a number of times, and some ask, of what? That would be of money, 500 pounds, pounds sterling. You know the old story, 
about an Englishman who married an American. And this man, this English, this British man, sees his new American wife coming down the stairs. He says, wow, you look so beautiful. You look like a thousand pounds. <laughs> his goal is to raise 500 pounds. He's going to raise 500 pounds for the kids. At the time, was, let's say, just to make things not so complicated, a thousand dollars. He's going to raise a thousand dollars. How's he going to do it? What he's going to do is he's going to take his bike. He's going to go to the park, and he's going to ride his bike around the park. That's all he's going to do. He's going to ride his bike around the park. And he's going to get sponsors. You know, like walkathons and runathons and I'm from sleepathons and whatever. As much as you can do to get sponsors, how many times are you going to go around? So his goal is to go around for two hours. He's going to raise 500 pounds, and he did it. He went to the park, and he went around for two hours. And this little boy, Charlie, seven years old from England, ended up raising approximately $200,000 in order to go and help and aid what happened in, in, in Haiti. Some of us think, what am I able to do? What am I able to do? You didn't ask that when you were a kid. Little kids don't ask questions, what am I able to do? They just go, they just do. They didn't ask it here in Israel, but we're gonna figure out, well, how are we gonna, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get back to Jerusalem? How are we gonna work this out? Let's think about it. If they actually would've thought about it, they never would've done what they did. <laughs> if anyone knows the history of of the unification and what happened in 67, no one in their right minds would have gone with that plan. It actually made no sense. But they decided that's it, we're gonna do. When a person understands how powerful they are, and they recognize the power within, and they know who they are, they're gonna change the entire world. Which letter are you? And not only that, but every single act that we do, we now are celebrating, as we said, the Jubilee 50 years, or some would say 50 years, 50 years of unifying this place, and the getting back to Kota, unbelievable. 50 years. But we understand that we're not even finished yet. Because ultimately the goal is not just to have the Kota. Ultimately the goal is to get the real deal. Not just to be in the outside gates, but to actually rebuild the entire temple. That God willing, if we're able to go ahead and every one of us can keep learning. Allah Torah, the world's created from Torah. Keep learning. Allah Havoda, keep praying. Thou Gamilas Chasodim and keep giving. Find your letter. Then every time we do that, we're actually putting another brick and another brick and another brick. And we're recreating the entire thing. So what I want to do right now is just end this together with a little bit of a song. To understand that the goal of what we're trying to do. The goal of what we're trying to do ultimately through our acts of kindness, through our good deeds through the learning, through the growing, through the through continuing, through random noises. What we're trying to accomplish is What we're trying to do is get the sound to work I'm going to turn on the volume now. No, that's not. Ultimately, to go ahead and through all the acts that we're doing and all the kindness and everything, the God willing, putting each brick one by one, slowly but surely, to rebuild the temple, to rebuild the Beit HaMikdash, that God willing be unifying the entire Jewish people in this beautiful land, which ultimately will bring peace to the entire world.